Kolchak, The Night Stalker is a classic television series from 1974 that follows the adventures of Carl Kolchak, a reporter who investigates mysterious crimes with unlikely causes, particularly those that law enforcement won't handle. Each episode sees him digging into the unknown, facing anything from vampires to aliens. While I don't have personal experiences or memories, the show has been known to inspire many to look beyond the ordinary and question the unexplained. It's a mix of horror, mystery, and humor that has left a lasting impression on its audience. Now, we're curious about your experiences. What is your most memorable moment from watching Kolchak the Night Stalker? Did it leave you with a funny, shocking, or even a sad fact that stuck with you? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more surprising facts that will be revealed in this video. Your stories are important, and sharing them can bring back those thrilling moments of the show. So, let's hear them. Yes, I'm Uncle Philly, man. What you want who can do for you? <coughs> Kolchak the Night Stalker stands as a pioneering series that brought the supernatural and investigative journalism together in a thrilling display. Darren McGavin portrayed Carl Kolchak, a tenacious reporter who often found himself on the trail of the paranormal, from vampires to aliens. Despite the show's modest budget, which sometimes led to less convincing special effects, the series was innovative for its time. It offered a unique blend of horror and humor anchored by McGavin's charismatic performance and his dynamic with Simon Oakland, who played his editor. The show's legacy is evident in its influence on later Supernatural series, despite its premature cancellation. It's a testament to the show's quality that it remains a topic of discussion and a piece of television history worth revisiting. Lomer, maybe you can help me anyway. Yeah, I, 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 I was wondering about the ancient Aztec religious custom of cutting out human... In the landscape of television, actors often find themselves in roles that shape their careers. Richard Keel, known for his towering presence, took a creative turn by co-authoring a historical novel, Kentucky Lion, the Cassius Marcellus Clay story with Pamela Wallace, who penned the screenplay for Witness. Simon Oakland, whose career spanned robust and authoritative characters, debuted in the film I Want to Live. His portrayal of strong figures continued, culminating in his role as Antonio Vincenzo, the boss in a notable sci-fi series. His respected acting skills were sometimes overshadowed by typecasting. A memorable moment in the series is the protagonist's hat toss. During the opening credits, a light-hearted touch to an otherwise serious show. Oakland's legacy, along with the show's cultural imprint, remains significant in television history. You're just interested in that. In the world of television, actors often become known for their roles, but their off-screen achievements and contributions to cinema are equally noteworthy. William Smith, despite rumors, did not reverse curl his body weight. The actual weight was 163 pounds. Darren McGavin, known for his lead role in this series, also starred in two films now preserved in the National Film Registry for their significance, The Man with the Golden Arm and A Christmas Story. Meanwhile, William Daniels, another prominent actor, had a memorable moment on St. Elsewhere where he sang lines from Sit Down John, a nod to his role in the musical 1776, which was incorporated into the show's Philadelphia episode. Dream about retiring. Uh -huh. I dream about breaking your face. Oh, I love you too, sister. Keenan Wynn, a notable actor, shared the screen with Leon Ames in a series of films throughout the mid-20th century. Their collaborations include Weekend at the Waldorf, No Leave, No Love, Song of the Thin Man, It's a Big Country, an American Anthology, The Absent-Minded Professor, and Son of Flubber. His work with Janet Lee was equally prolific, featuring in Angels in the Outfield, Fearless Fagan, The Perfect Furlough, Touch of Evil, and House on Green Apple Road. Beyond his film roles, Wynn also dedicated time to entertain troops overseas, performing alongside Pat O'Brien and Paulette Goddard in a Yuzo troupe during World War II specifically in the China-Burma-India Theater of Operations. We'll find it all. We're checking upon all the damage right now, sir. Just give me your name and your cabin number. My name is Carl. John Marley, Phil Silvers, and Mary Wicks each brought their unique presence to the screen, with careers touching Oscar-nominated films and significant roles in American theater and television. Marley's film appearances include Oscar-nominated works, notably The Godfather, which won Best Picture. Silver's life and career are chronicled in a dedicated biography, highlighting his contributions to entertainment. Wicks reprised a famous Broadway role for television decades after her initial performance, showcasing her lasting appeal and talent. 
Their collective experiences reflect the rich tapestry of American entertainment history. Explanation for what's been going on around well, here. What has been going on around here? Like this afternoon, a patient in a heart-lung machine was was heart. In the backdrop of a bustling newsroom, the Model 15 teletype machines were a common sight, often captured from the back or side in scenes. These devices symbolized the constant flow of information and the pursuit of truth. Meanwhile, Richard Keel, known for his towering presence, graced the Scandinavian sci-fi game and film convention in Helsingborg, Sweden in October 2009, connecting with fans and celebrating the genre. Universal Studios, with a history of creating horror-themed television like Thriller and Night Gallery, continued this tradition, setting the stage for suspense and the supernatural in their productions. In a unique twist of roles, Ruth McDivitt portrays both a columnist and an elderly individual who engages in secretive observation, ultimately becoming the subject of her own column. Meanwhile, James Gregory, known for his extensive acting career, makes an uncredited appearance in a documentary, showcasing footage from his earlier work in a military training film. Throughout the show, the personal life of the protagonist, Carl, remains a mystery as viewers are never taken into his private abode, leaving much about his character's personal side to the audience's imagination. Don't look at the Flaherty. Oh, you can call me Jack. Jack? Jack? In the world of television and film, actors often cross paths in unexpected ways and take on challenges that push their limits. Richard Keel, known for his towering presence, engaged with fans at the Mad Monster Party, sharing his experiences alongside notable figures like William Shatner. Despite his fear of heights, Keel's dedication to his roles was evident as he performed stunts that would make many balk. His portrayal of Jaws was so convincing that even with a stunt double, audiences were none the wiser. Julie Adams' career also had its share of personal milestones, such as meeting her future husband, Ray Danton, on a movie set, proving that behind the scenes can be just as eventful as the on-screen action. Oh, but he's much better. Yes, well, if you tried any mineral oil, that sometimes helps. Oh. In the midst of global turmoil, Mary Wicks chose to serve her community by volunteering with the Hospital Committee of the American Theater Wing War Service in New York. Her commitment to service during World War II exemplified her dedication beyond her acting career. Simon Oakland, known for his strong screen presence, passed away just days after his colleague Mike Kellen. Their shared screen time in the 30 Fathom Grave marked a memorable collaboration. Wicks also left a lasting impression on audiences through her role as Nurse Preen, clashing with Monty Woolley's character in The Man Who Came to Dinner, and as the memorable Miss Cathcart in the television series Dennis the Menace, showcasing her range and talent in both film and television. Uh, yeah, that's, um... A uh, whole sentence right there. Yeah, I know. It's got a period in the end of it. Well, I just know a few terms. In the world of television, actors often have unique experiences that contribute to their performances. Richard Keel, known for his towering presence, once performed an unusual stunt by biting through a cable made entirely of licorice for a film role. Meanwhile, Mary Wicks shared the stage with Grace Kelly, marking Kelly's first professional acting job in a play at the Bucks County Playhouse. Darren McGavin, another talented actor, faced a different challenge during the filming of The Natural. His performance impressed the lead actor so much that his role was expanded. However, this led to complications with union contract negotiations over salary and billing. In a surprising turn, McGavin chose to forego his billing to expedite the production process. These instances highlight the diverse behind-the-scenes stories that shape an actor's career. I gotta tell you, the last time I was in the loop, there was... Oh, hey, listen, you know what we're gonna do? William Daniels, known for his portrayal of historical figures, notably played John Adams and his son John Quincy Adams in various productions, as well as their cousin Samuel Adams. Mary Wicks shared her insights on comedy at a college lecture in 1973. Darren McGavin, recognizable for his repeated lines and character names in different shows and movies, notably said whatever it takes in two separate roles and played characters named Harry twice. I'm Rosalind Winters. Just, 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 just hush up, will you shut up? I, t I take it the department has a formal writ to... John Marley, a seasoned actor, began his career on Broadway with Stop Press and went on to perform in The Strong, Are Lonely, and The Investigation. His directorial skills were honed in regional theater. 
Keenan Wynn, known for his family ties to the Hudson brothers and his daughter's marriage to Paul Williams, faced personal loss when his daughter Emily passed away from cancer at a young age. His granddaughter, Jessica Keenan Wynn, continues the family's artistic legacy on Broadway. Larry Linville, famous for his role as Frank Burns in MASH, was humorously nicknamed Ferret Face by his brother, a moniker that stuck with his character throughout the show. No, no, thanks. Sir. Courtesy of the editor of the Times. He's a sucker for the Cubs. Oh, mm. Tony, I'm on something big. Yeah. In the world of television, unique characters and memorable performances often leave a lasting impression. Richard Keel, known for his towering presence, faced a significant challenge while portraying the Hulk due to his limited vision. Despite being slated for two pilots, he shifted gears to feature in the film Silver Street. Phil Silvers, another actor with a notable career, had severe eyesight issues that led to a unique stage fear. His concerns about falling into an orchestra pit influenced his decision making in both stage and film roles, notably affecting his involvement with a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. His portrayal of Pseudolus on Broadway, although cut short, earned him a Tony Award. The distinctive style of Carl Kolchak, brought to life by Darren McGavin, was not a product of a costume designer, but of the actor's own creation, adding a personal touch to the character's appearance. These elements combined to shape the series' identity, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of 1970s television. <laughs> but I learned some things from those guys, like... Uh... Don't give information to somebody who might really have dark... Before his role as the formidable Jaws in the James Bond films, Richard Keel brought his towering presence to the screen as a creature of the night, not once but twice. His first portrayal was as the mystical Diablero in an episode that delved into the realm of Native American folklore. He returned to haunt the screen as a swamp monster, a figure drawn from the depths of marshland myths. Meanwhile, Phil Silvers, another familiar face, was honored decades later for his comedic role as Master Sergeant Ernest G. Bilko, a character that left a lasting impression on early television comedy. His legacy was cemented with a commemorative postage stamp, a tribute to his influence on the genre. Julie Adams, known for her roles in classic horror, shared her experiences in an interview, providing insights into the era of creature features that captivated audiences with tales of the unknown and the otherworldly. Crows, even coyotes. In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with various genres and roles. Nina Fock, known for her roles alongside Edward G. Robinson, and in the epic film The Ten Commandments, brought a touch of classic Hollywood to the series. William Daniels, who portrayed Dustin Hoffman's father in The Graduate despite a small age difference, added depth to the cast. Keenan Wynn, set to appear in Superman, faced an unexpected health issue that led to his replacement by Jackie Cooper, showing the unpredictability of the industry. These actors' experiences highlight the dynamic nature of television production and the adaptability required by its players. In the world of television, actors often have diverse experiences that extend beyond the screen. Mary Wicks, known for her sharp wit, shared her knowledge by teaching comic acting, guiding aspiring performers at the American Conservatory Theater. Tom Skerritt, recognized for his strong screen presence, holds the unique distinction of appearing in both versions of The Dead Zone, showcasing his adaptability across different eras. Richard Keel, with his towering stature, made a memorable appearance at a convention in Sweden, connecting with fans of science fiction and cinema. These instances reflect the varied paths actors take, enriching their craft and engaging with audiences in multiple ways. Plinking and twanging the night of July 9th than I ever wanted to. Fortunately, some of